Today we're looking at Section 4, Optimization, out of Chapter 3, Rate of Change and Derivatives, out of Business Calculus with Excel. One of our standard problems is always to optimize a function. Given a function, we want to find either the highest or the lowest point on the graph. We want to find what input gives us the best output. In this section, we'll look through a series of examples. We start with a quadratic example because we can do quadratic examples by algebra and don't need calculus. We always start with problems that we don't need calculus for and then set up the Excel spreadsheet to be able to find it, finding the derivative numerically and setting it equal to zero. Then we'll look at a problem where we can't use algebra and we have to use the derivative method to find the optimal point. Then we'll look to an example where the critical points are outside the interval, an example where what we really do is start with a system of equations that we need to reduce to one equation and one unknown before we can tackle it without, with calculus, and then an example where we start with data and use the data to find a quadratic trend line and then continue our process, and finally another minimizing example. As is my normal standard, I will follow the structure of the text, but not the same examples. They're already available to you. I'm going to do s different examples than that, but in the same. So for the first example, we want to maximize f of x equals x times 36 minus 2x minus 5x plus 90. This might show up as a profit function, where 36 minus 2x is my demand price, 5x is my unit cost, 90x is my fixed cost, and I'm looking at the interval from 0 to 20. I can do this algebraically by rewriting this. I multiply out and simplify. It becomes 2x minus 2x squared plus 31x minus 90. We know that's a parabola facing down. We know that the high point is at the vertex, which happens when x equals minus b over 2a, which turns out to be 7.75. But we can also do it by finding where the derivative is 0. And so we've set this problem up and done it by algebra. Now we wanted to set the same problem and do it using calculus. So I've set up the same template I used before. Here's my function. I filled in the function for f of x. And if I look at my formulas, the top is f of x plus 0.01 minus f of x minus 0.01, the bottom is 0.02. But I set up my x's, x plus 0.01, x minus 0.01, and I have to type the formula in once. Once I have that, I can copy down from 0 to 20, and then say, the function for f of x, since I've lined up x, x plus 0.01, x minus 0.01, and f of the same things, I continue across and just drag and let quick fill fill in the numbers. My top is, of course, x plus 0.01 minus f of x minus 0.01, and that gives me the derivative. I drop down and look at it and say, I think the derivative is going to be 0 somewhere around here. So between 7 and 8, I'm going to look at somewhere around 7 and 8. So I'm going to start a couple more points. I'm going to start at 8. That's my guess. Copy all my formulas down. I didn't quite get the derivative to be 0 there. It's close, though. I'm going to look at my data, my what-if analysis, goal seek. I'd like the derivative to be 0 by changing a28 and what we see is it happens at 7.75 that's the same place we found by the algebra I now have three candidate points I have my beginning point my ending point and my critical point and I simply look at these and say which is the highest number 30.125 is the highest number. That's where the maximum occurs. I then take this template, and I'm pretty much just going to copy it. You'll notice it's a pretty close copy. I've zeroed out a lot of things. f of x, I have a new f of x. 
this is a different function. So this is a function that is 10 times x minus 20, x minus 10 x minus 20 times 0 0.8 to the x over 30 minus 100. So someone has given me this function and I'd like to optimize it. I'm going to do the same basic thing since I have my template. I'm going to drag it down. This gives me values of x plus 0.01, x minus 0.01. I'm going to take my function, evaluate it at the other points, the two close by points. The top is computed, the bottom, the derivative. I once again copy down and I'm looking at where the derivative is zero or where the derivative goes from positive to negative and it looks like it happens somewhere around 130. So I'm going to start with 130, say I'd like to change it, I'd like to use goal seek, I do my what if analysis with goal seek. So I'm going to want the derivative to be zero by changing the value of x. and I find my highest point winds up being at 136.43. I plug those numbers in, my two endpoints, my critical point, I take the highest of them, so the maximum occurs on the interval at the critical point. If I'd been asked for the minimum on this interval, I would say it happens at zero, because zero is the lowest of those three numbers. The next thing to look at is this is the first example. The only thing I've done different is I've changed my interval. I've said I'm interested in the highest value between 10 and 20. And I looked at my critical point and said I have a critical point at 7.75, and that's the highest value, but it's not the highest value in the interval. I only look at things in the interval. So this is the highest value in the interval. And so I need to check which are the points in my interval that I need to be concerned with. For the next example, I'm going to look at a problem that really has two things. I have a cup, an open version cup that looks like part of a can. It's made from a thousand square centimeters of metal. The area I've said is 10,000, and I want that to be pi r squared, that's the area of the base, 2 pi r h is the area of the sides, the volume is going to be pi r squared times h. I've got two functions and two unknowns, r and h, and I only know how to work with one unknown at this point. So I'm going to take this top equation and solve it for h, and I get h is 1000 minus pi r squared quantity divided by 2 pi r. And I plug that in and I get now volume is pi r squared times 1,000 minus pi r squared quantity divided by 2 pi r. So this gives me what my function is. One of the things that's worthwhile to note on this is when I'm trying to write the function, how I write pi is pi open parentheses close parentheses. It's a function with no inputs. I do the same setup. I copy my function down and repeat it, and I've looked at it and said the derivative goes from positive to negative somewhere around 10. I'm going to start somewhere around 10, and I'd like the derivative to be checked. I want the derivative to be 0 by setting x equal to 0, and what we have is 10.3, and when I plug that in as my critical point, 10.3, I see I get the highest volume. The volume there is about 17. I need to copy my function. I'm sorry on that. I need to make sure that I have the function that I'm interested in. And what it's saying is dividing by zero is a bad thing, so I'm going to say I need at least one centimeter in the, in the radius, so I want the cups to be at least one centimeter in radius. I look at my volumes. If I done one centimeter, it's almost 500 cubic centimeters. 
20 doesn't work at all. And if I do 10.3, I have 3,433. So if I look down my list, somewhere around here in between there is where I'm going to get my two lar my largest values. And so I take one of them and use it as my maximum. So the maximum isn't on the original table. I used goal seek to find it. Continuing with how we've started, the most important functions don't give us a formula, but they start with data. I do the normal thing I'm doing. I've been told this is a quadratic formula. So I'd like to insert a scatter plot. I have my scatter plot. I'm going to look at the scatter plot, add a trend line. I think this is quadratic, so that's a polynomial of degree 2. I'd like to display the equation on the chart. I'd like to make the equation a size that I can actually read it. And I see it's the equation that I've already filled in here and have filled in one function. And so I'm going to take this and drag it down and get a general idea of what I'm doing for my maximum. Looking at the graph, I can see that somewhere around here, between 30 and 40 is where the maximum is going to occur. And so I'm going to guess 35 is my maximum. I'm going to use goal seek, what if analysis, goal seek. I'd like Q28, which is my F, to be 0. That's going to be at I28 is my X. And it computes at 36.06. I'm going to test that as my critical point. Make sure to plug it in. Make sure to plug my formula for f of x in. So if I had 0, I would get minus 150. At the other endpoint, I get 136. And somewhere in the middle, I get 207.2. And that happens right around 36. The last example I'm going to do is economic ordering quantity. In ordering, you get two kinds of costs. One is in the size of the storage will be linear in the size of the order. Inspection costs are going to be linear in the number of orders, so they're inversely proportional. And when I add the two of them together, I get something that looks like this. I'm trying to find the minimum. And so I've started with my function. I have my function down. 100, 1,000 divided by x plus 20 times x. I want to find the spot where it's at a minimum. I'm going to look at this, and I can look and say, it looks like it hasn't gotten to a maximum between here. Um, ah, actually, it has a minimum is what I'm looking for. And I think the minimum is somewhere around the area of 280. And so I'm going to say the minimum, my guess is 7. I double this so that I can remember where I've guessed. I'd like to set the derivative equal to 0. I'm going to goal seek. I want I28 to be 0 by changing A28. And it's at 7.705. I'm going to take this and copy it into my critical point. So I have my list of critical points. I want to make sure I'm using the right function. Once again, 0 is a bad size for something that has a reciprocal in it. And so if I just do one order, I pay a whole lot. If I do 20 orders, I pay less than that. But if I make my order size 7.07, .07, that's the least expensive. So I have fairly low storage costs and few enough orders. So this whole process we'll do repeatedly, trying to minimize or maximize whichever we want to find the extreme points. I want to find my endpoints and my critical points. I set it up, construct the derivative, and once I've constructed the derivative, I set the derivative equal to zero. That's how I find my critical points. Thank you.